Taniguchi, Monigetti. Yurok. Betiol. Gisales. Sala. Shinohara. Nakayama. 368 brought in in ninth place. Lift. Matthias he did so well in London. He was second. Alan Story has just made the point to me that Matthias apparently is not a warm weather runner, in which case he's in the wrong place. He's not very far from the athlete's uh, hotel, but he looks weary. Only well, Getty now taking it on. Just behind him is Betty Ol and Taniguchi. Yurok. Bordin's back with them. Nakayama. Gisales. Sala. Shinohara. Well, the Japanese supporters must be delighted with what they're seeing out there. All three of their athletes in the leading eight. But if you're a Japanese and you're running the marathon, then you're just going to go as long as you possibly can with a leading group. That's the only tactic you, you could possibly have. That's the way they run. They'll just run and run, and then eventually, if they're not going to win it, they'll just peel off the group, and that'll be it, whereas some of the others will run a more tactical race. But if you're part of the excitement and part of the pressure of the Japanese marathon approach, then uh, you certainly won't be doing anything other than just hang on to the leading group. They suddenly veered off there. Look at that, every one of them went for a drink and every one of them went for a sponge. Well, that tells you, tells you it all. I'm just looking at Sala there, who's passed the sponge by, by Jolindo Bordin. He's got two sponges, one in each hand, and he's using them, pouring over his head, keeping, trying to keep the temperature down. That's the key. rejoined them. We've got nine in that group. Three Japanese, one Australian, one Pole, one man from Djibouti, an Ethiopian, two from Italy, Nakayama. Getting back in touch. Well, uh, Selmy was up with the leaders for a long, long time, but he's paid for it. Well, I think it tells you a little bit about the conditions when the, uh, the Portuguese and the, and the Algerians, the Africans, can't stay with the pace. Looking at Salah there, you know, he, we see him in the big occasions, like I said earlier, the World Championships and the Olympic Games. We haven't seen much of him recently. Actually, Brendan, I've just noticed that leading group's been joined by another athlete who dropped off the pace, but he's worked his way back, which just suggests they're uh, slowing down. Castillo of Mexico is up with them. There's another Portuguese in trouble. Pinero, who had such a good run in the London Marathon, he was fifth. But uh, it's been a bad day for Portugal. Well, he won't be the last person to drop out of this race. There'll be a few more, and it'll be happening in the next five or six kilometres, because that's the tough part. Once you get inside the last 5k, 5k to run, then you can you can possibly live on. But Monaghetti does look strong. He's had that open space. He's had that. He's had that freedom. He's running very, very relaxed. He's been very conscientious about his preparation in every sense. But looking through the group, Nakayama, Castillo, and Betiol, Chinahara, Gisales and Taniguchi, and then Sala, 
Kuruk, Galindo Bordin, the Olympic champion, and Steve Monaghetti. Now, Steve Monaghetti's race plan is certainly not to do anything just yet. He certainly doesn't, isn't going to try any great effort until they get inside the last five kilometers. And that's the part of the race that Jalindo bought in as strongest. So I think we're heading for a classic marathon. The last couple of big games marathons have been classics. And this looks to me, it has the makings of another one. It certainly does. And uh, I think it's quite significant, actually, that uh, the group's grown to 10. So they're not, nobody's forcing the pace. I mean, having reduced it to eight, it's back to 10. So they've been able to make up the ground. The uh, athletes had dropped off the pace. That was Bordin at one stage. And also Castillo, who was some further way back. They're in some trouble. It's Freigang who was with the leader so long. And McConan uh, having trouble. In a marathon, when you come apart, you really do come undone at the seams, don't you? Well, certainly, we've seen, we've seen the effect of that a couple on a couple of them, and I said, I said, and I'll say it again, they won't be the last to suffer. It must be savage out there. We're a little bit detached in this air-conditioned room. The only connection we have with the weather is we've got a chart out there which tells us that the temperature is increasing, the humidity is falling a little, but the damage is being done already. A combination of temperature and humidity, that's the killer in the marathon, and if anything, Humidity is worse than temperature, but they're having both to contend with. Tani Gucci looks as if he's been hypnotized. I remember him in that uh, London Marathon, though. He's absolutely tunnel, tunnel vision it is, really, isn't it? He's absolutely switched off, oblivious, oblivious to anything else. And to some extent, during these marathon races, you've got to put your mind in neutral for a while. And you've certainly got to stay positive about it because there'll be times in the marathon when your confidence ebbs and wanes. And there's McConnell got running again. But his challenge is over. He was the one they were looking at. He, they were studying his form. They were asking questions about him. They were getting the answers that you do get in the Olympic in the in the Games Village that he's running well, he's never been better. And he's being passed by number 101 from Botswana. I'm gonna try and say his name. The Geotsang. Heard the, we've heard the loud Australians on the side of the course shouting, go on Monas. And they're coming back towards the team village and the, the Australians will be there in support of Steve. Very popular athlete, great student of the sport, very well advised and coached by Chris Wardlow who ran in 76 and 80 in the Olympic Games and is now challenging all his own, own efforts into Steve Monaghetti's preparation and he manages to keep him fresh, he manages to keep him in the big ones. Apart from London in 1989, where he finished second to Wakahuri, and, and uh, Berlin, where he won in his fastest ever time, he's only ever appeared in championships. But there's the championship runner, Galindo Bordin. Well, 60 started, but there's gonna be an awful number, of, a lot of dropouts. some of these athletes, I know Sori's just been making a point, and we did mention it before the start of the race, because of the 6 a.m. start in Tokyo, they've been up almost all night. Breakfast has been midnight to one o'clock. Alan. Uh, Jilindo Bordin was particularly keen to make certain his preparation was perfect, um, and he's been out here living on his own um, with a, a cook in somewhere, a, a, an apartment out near the airport, um, and Went to bed last night, the regular sleeping time out here was 7 o'clock. Um, got up at 12 o'clock and ate, uh, and has been sitting playing Game Boys and watching the television. Goodness knows what was on the television out here at that time of night, but he's, he hasn't been to bed since, since midnight. Um, and uh, he looked wide awake from the start. Um, not everybody looked wide awake. Uh, certainly some of our team management didn't look too wide awake, um, but that's not surprising really considering what time of day it is. They're going to love that. Peter Mayer 
Calado was with the leader so long. Frygang of... Uh, oh, it's not Frygang, is it? It's one of the Americans. Probably Spence, Steve Spence. Dobler of Germany, we saw earlier. Nakayama's now the one uh, at the back of the group. Came into this race as the number one Japanese. It's a temperature that's climbing. The humidity uh, has remained fairly constant. It was higher than that slightly before. Frygang having a really bad time. Stomach cramp. We talked about the, uh, the idea of uh, the World Championship Marathon being a little devalued in the future when they're held every two years. But if you keep holding them in conditions like this in the middle of summer, not only will they be devalued because there's no money for it and the athletes will go off and run in the springtime and autumn time marathons in the big cities, but when they see, they see the suffering that's going on here, and they see how difficult it is to run in the hot conditions, and it'll be just as tough in Barcelona next year, um, then I think you, you, you may find a, a double reaction in the fact that they just, not only do they not want to run marathons in championships, they may not want to run them because they're held in such, often held in such torrid conditions. Well, it is significant that the big money Tokyo marathon is run uh, in the uh, better weather in February, a better marathon weather, that is. Well, they're coming up to 30 kilometers. We'll take another look at the time here and see if there's been any speeding up. Nakayama looks as though he may have speeded up, and we'll just take a check on that. Well, Nakayama's the latest casualty there. He's out of touch. One hour, 35 minutes, 33 seconds of 30 kilometers. Well, 16.36 for that five kilometer split. Well, that's the slowest by far. Taniguchi's hit the front as Nakayama has fallen away but they're desperate to get their drinks at 30 kilometers, and this is a very important one. They need these drinks of their own, and they also need the sponges and the, the water itself, which comes up a few hundred meters time. This is really a hard break. There's no question about that now. He means business. He accelerated into the uh, feeding station, made sure he got uh, his drink, and he's got another one there. But there's no doubt at all that uh, sharp, pattering action he's got has uh, increased. His leg tempo has increased quite a bit there. And the splits, there to be seen. Taniguchi now away from Europe of Poland. And the other Japanese, Shinohara, in third place. So it's Japan one and three, and Nakayama back in tenth place. The Ethiopian is uh, Gisales, alongside Sada of Djibouti. They're fourth and fifth. It's Nakayama, the main hope for Japan, but no longer, I think. Well, I wonder whether there was any connection between the fact that he, when he went off the back, Taniguchi started making a run for it. And certainly Monigetti bought in, and uh, Betty all haven't been able to cover that break. Just behind them, you've got the Mexican, Castillo. But there's no doubt at all, the race is on, and it's the two Japanese who are making it. Taniguchi and Shinohara. Yurik in third place. Taniguchi, 31, won twice on this course, won the London in 87, the Bapu Marathon in 85, got some miles in those legs, he won in Rotterdam last year, truly international marathon figure, Shinohara, only 29 behind him, two, some two years younger, nothing like that sort of marathon background, but looking good. Yurik, uh, I was just uh, comparing notes with Alan Storey. 
London Marathon uh, race director, and marathon coach. And Brennan, uh, Alan was making the point, and it's uh, quite significant too. He's a big man, isn't he, for a marathon on a Europe? He certainly is. He's, he's strong, though. He's obviously uh, in control of himself today. This is a, by far the best we've ever seen him run. And they were looking down the field, and Nakayama is really struggling now. I said the Japanese would go as far as they possibly could, and then it'll all gi they'll give it all away. But whilst he struggles, the other two Japanese, he's gone very quickly to 120 metres behind the leaders. And I think he's going to have a terrible job in trying to finish this race. He's obviously in pain because they are... They, they run that last five kilometers slower than any of the others. And now it's a case Monaghetti, Borden and Betiol. They've got to work at it now through 31K. Just over six miles to go. Sala hasn't been near the front, just stayed in the group. Gisales of Ethiopia ahead of him. And then the two Japanese in Huru. Well, you've got the three away in front, then you've got two uh, together, then another group of three, and really the chasing groups have got to help each other. Well, this is a sudden burst, and it came after that slower five kilometre. Actually, the uh, lad in second place, Shinohara, only got uh, into this race uh, because uh, the man chosen, Kazazu, is injured but what a run he's having there's nakayama he's had enough he'd be bitterly bitterly disappointed when you look at these marathon runners who are suffering they grow up considerably older in the course of a couple of hours he's determined to go on though he doesn't want to be seen to dnf in his own, own marathon You'll have a terrible problem trying to finish now, though. Once, you've, once the concentration's gone, once you've stopped for a walk, doesn't matter what the crowd do, doesn't matter how loud they shout, if the legs won't carry you, they won't carry you. And Kanaguchi's scampering along the road. Looks as though he's accelerating, but Salev Djibouti has closed that gap. He did it gradually, too. Yes, he didn't panic, did he? And uh, looks as if the leading three have slowed down. Taniguchi having made that bid, and he, no doubt he tried to break them, found he'd got company and has settled now for the fact he's got to regroup. Look at the concentration on Shinigara. Europe. And Sala, that's the closest he's been to the lead. He likes to be... He likes to be in the front, but he likes to be there in the very late stages. He does do that. He gets irritated with other marathon runners around him, and he's not happy with that. Taniguchi, that may have been his last-ditch effort. And now Sala, for the first time, hits the front. Sala, of course, the second-fastest marathon runner in history. Two hours, seven minutes, uh, seven seconds. Dinsamo of Ethiopia has run the fastest marathon, two hours, six minutes, 50 seconds. Well, they're not thinking about that, and they're way off that sort of, sort of pace. The two Italians side by side. Can they work as a team? Can they get back in the race? It's beginning to look doubtful. And sadly there, I think he's going through a bad time now, Steve Monaghetti. Everything went right in his preparation. He was very, very confident. He was running well coming into this race. If it had been a cool spring day or autumn day, in London or Chicago, I would have thought he could have run the fastest time he's ever run. But when the conditions are like they are today, well, you never know. You never know till you get going. Just a word with Alan's story, uh, with so much marathon coaching experience. Alan, you can do all sorts of things in preparation uh, for this sort of thing, but apart from experiencing this on this sort of course, a race run in Tokyo at the wrong time of year, without any doubt, there's not many ways in which you can prepare. I mean, look at uh, Nakayama, who lives here. I mean, he's come absolutely apart. I think there's, there's two aspects. One, that you can train yourself to be as good as possible for you under the conditions. But there are just some, some people who are better in hot conditions. And Sala there probably doesn't think it's too hot at all. Uh, but it's certainly hotter in his native land than it is in, in Poland, for instance. Uh, and the, the Italians normally go fairly well in, in warm weather. And I see that they're that uh, um, Gilindo and 
um, from the board and, and Betiel are working their way back up to the lead group, uh, which they've done it very sensibly and very carefully. Um, but to go back to the, the subject of heat, you, you, we, I don't think it's possible for Britons to ever be quite as good as some of the, the, the African um, athletes at coping with warm weather. I just, we, we're just different characters, aren't we? we're just different animals altogether. Uh, I don't see there's much we can do. Uh, and if our athletes want to train to run in Barcelona, they can, they can go away to warm weather camp and they can train as much as they like. But it's still not, not going to be in, in, in their best interest to hold the race in Barcelona. Well, I just noticed there, Jalindo Bordin. He threw his hat off, he crossed himself, and the race is on for him now. Look at him. I think the leading group, Taniguchi having uh, failed to get a clear break, slowed down, and the two Italians have got back. And they've got back economically as well, which is important. They've not had to do a lot to get there. Taniguchi looks across. But it's rare in the closing stages of a marathon with this level of competitor that uh, you find such variations, in fact, people dropping, going back and then rejoining the group and being able to do that. Well, Bordin kept the confidence. He, didn't, he wasn't worried when they went, went clear of him. He was more concerned that that time to get his patient. He said the other day in that interview, he said the most important part of this race was, the, was getting to the last feeding station, getting some water on board, and then taking off. And he joked with me afterwards saying, the only trouble with the feeding station, they don't offer you a glass of wine. Well, the way things are going, we could see two or three on the track together at the finish. Because uh, they're very wary. Taniguchi, having tried to make that break, didn't succeed. But they're very, very wary now, obviously, of uh, putting too much in too soon. Castillo, followed by Monaghetti. You can tell they're working harder, but they're actually getting slower. And that's the effect of the conditions. They're on their way back to the stadium. There's Nakayama. I didn't think he'd finish. I didn't think there was any point in it. There isn't really any point in persecuting yourself when you know that your effort's over. But I wonder how long the disappointment of this race will last with him. It'll probably last for the rest of his life because in Japan, the marathon is what it's all about in track and field athletics. And Bordin, you can see the pr pressure being applied slowly there because Hugh Rook, who was looking comfortable a few kilometers ago, has slipped off the back of the group and beginning to look as though he's struggling too. Well, in this situation, there must be uh, a lot of thinking now going on. What do we do about this? Am I strong enough to try and make a break, get away from this group, and try and get in a medal position? Gordon and Taniguchi, Shinohara, Sala, Gisales, Batiel in the background, and Yura Kapola. Got some news of the British athletes. Sam Carey uh, at 25 kilometers went through in one hour, 21 minutes and 20 seconds. And Dave Buzzer went through uh, nine seconds slower, 121.29. The leaders uh, some just under three minutes in front of the two Brits. Well, they went to the halfway point in 66.25, which would have brought them home in two hours, 12 minutes if they kept going at that pace. But then they began to slow, and obviously the conditions were, were, were making their effect on them. And, and now, look, looking at my calculations, it looks as though they're going to run about two hours, 14 and a half, two hours, 15, because they're certainly not going to speed up now, except in the very, very late stages. Well, Brendan, somebody's... Uh surely going to try and break this up but it's just a matter now of having the confidence and judgment and belief in yourself to go and then you could make an awful mistake it's also a case of having it physically Gordon's obviously got his mental act together we'll find out in the next few miles whether he's got his physical act together but the
the one thing I don't think anyone in this group would want to face is a sprint in the stadium. Certainly not. The first time he ever, we ever saw him in, in the international arena, he came into the stadium in, in Stuttgart in the World Champ in the, in the European Championships and out sprinted his teammate in the stadium to take the gold medal. That was the day Steve Jones made a brave effort to try and win that European Championship back in 1986. So I'm talking about sprinting at the end of marathons and so on. No matter how inspired you get by the possibility of a medal, when you've got 26 miles behind you in these conditions, it's a very different game. This group looks as though they're settling together. It looks as though someone is going to start to make a move because I think they're just safety in numbers. And look at Salah, he's all over the place. He's never comfortable when there are other athletes around him. He gets irritated very easily and he shows that by waving his arms about and shouting. We saw him make one little effort, but it wasn't a he wasn't trying to win, he was just in the lead, he just happened to be there. But this is Bordin, I think, applying the pressure, making his effort to try and let his strength tell, because that's the thing about Jolindo Bordin, he's the strong man of the marathon. His teammate Betty are running a very, very good race and just staying in that group too. And he looks to be in control. And then Taniguchi. And on the outside, Sala of Djibouti. Actually, Sala, second fastest marathon runner in history. When you look at his race record, uh, he's not won a lot. Bronze medal in the Olympic Games in 88, a silver in this world championship in 87. He won the World Cup twice. Uh, but he was third in London in 89, second in New York, and second in Rotterdam in 88. Could this be his winning day? I wonder if Taniguchi is getting ready to make another effort, because the first effort he made split the group right down to this number. There were more around. Steve Monaghetti was around. And he went, to, he's paying, he paid for that pace. And Taniguchi finding himself in the front. I wonder if we'll see him scamper like he did before and put on the pressure for a little while. Two Japanese, two Italians, one Ethiopian, one Pole. The man from Djibouti and the man from Ethiopia. And the man from Italy. Betio, well, it's the first time I've ever seen him in the lead in a marathon, certainly in a, in a marathon of this quality. But he was, he was willing to wait no longer. He probably thought there were too many in the group for his liking. Maybe he was feeling good, but I don't think anybody would be feeling good now. They'll all be, they'll all be suffering, and it's the one who can keep himself together the longest. And we've seen how patient Bordin is, though. He's waited till just outside the stadium before. Salah is the one who may make an effort. He doesn't like to wait till the very late stages. And if you remember in the Olympic Games in Seoul, we couldn't believe he, how fast he was going within the last two miles. We thought he was going to win it the way he went there, and Bordin just slowly tracked him down, slowly hauled him in, overtook him just outside the stadium. They're 35 kilometers in one hour, 52 minutes, and I think that's even slower. I think that's about one, I think that's about two hours, um, 15 pace. Getting into the uh, last four miles of the race now. Shinohara now, the lead man, bought in second place, Tanaguchi third. Of the leading group, Shinohara looks the most composed. Well, that last five kilometers, 16.33, that was, that was as, almost as slow as the slowest, which was 16.36, which was the five kilometers before. So the last 10K in over 33 minutes. And, and by world-class marathon standards, that's not exceptional running, but you can see the reason. It doesn't need to be explained in terms of time. I think uh, Shinohara found himself in front by accident, really, because of the pauses at the uh, feeding station. 